Well, settle in. It's going to get a little bumpy from here. Uh, Jim Shaw, columnist with Forum Communications, wrote an article that I read on Saturday. I always read Jim's articles because they get you thinking. Uh, and you know what? He always brings homework and, uh, you know, the type of things that, that bring current events right into you, into the opportunity to, to have that conversation. He brings that through his column. Now, Jim wrote a piece uh, this weekend, and what he wrote it on uh, was one of the hosts here uh, on this very network. He wrote it on Representative Rick Becker, Dr. Becker, which you see host his own show here. And what okay. Jim brought to that conversation uh, was, you know, a take from other physicians on Dr. Becker. And so let's bring him in. Jim, good to have you coming down the road with us. Thanks for having me here. Always a pleasure. Tell people what the article was about. Tell them what, what you did in the article. Okay, bear with me. I'll take a couple of minutes. But uh, I wrote a column where other doctors in this state, highly respected doctors, are calling for Dr. Rick Becker to be disciplined by the North Dakota Board of Medicine. How did this calling come about? I was talking to one of those doctors uh, about another column dealing with COVID, and he said, you really should write about Dr. Becker because he really should be disciplined. And I said, what are you talking about? And he explained to me that what Dr. Becker has done with his downplaying of the vaccine, with his downplaying of masks, with his promotion of ivervectin, ivermectin, uh, is all false, unfounded information, dangerous information, and rules from the Board of Medicine say he should be disciplined for spreading false information. I said to him, okay, that's a start, but I can't just write this column based on what you had to say. Uh, I need to do more research about this. So what I did is I contacted other doctors to see if they shared the same opinion, and doctors who are highly respected in this state, every one of them agreed that Dr. Becker should be disciplined, and some of them are quoted in the column. And I felt, okay, if they all feel this way, then now I'm mostly convinced. From that point then, I went and did some research on what Dr. Becker had said. I found things that he had written in a column. I had things he had written on his Facebook page. I had thing, found things that he had said on his Beck television show. From there then, I went to research ivermectin. Is it effective? Is it recommended? The answer is no. It's not proven to be effective, and it is not recommended by any credible medical institute, such as the FDA or the World Health Organization. And then finally, I called the Board of Medicine to find out, well, how does this work? What are the rules and what are the penalties? And the rules are that doctors are not allowed to spread false information about treating a disease. And there is a procedure in place in North Dakota where people, anybody, can file a complaint against a given doctor, such as Dr. Becker, and then that would theoretically spring an investigation by about a six or seven person group who would then determine whether Dr. Becker should be disciplined. The complaint is not public information, but if there is discipline, then that would be public information. So if there's any doubt uh, about him, supporting or making light of, of ivermectin. Uh, I, I want you to just take a listen and, and have the audience take a, take a look at, at, at this. Uh, play clip number one, would you guys? So I don't know why you wouldn't take it. And so right? for our audience, I'm gonna do that. This is ivermectin. Way to go. It's safe. And in fact, in my field, it can be used to treat rhinophyma, which is uh, uh, not rhinophyma, but uh, rosacea, which can cause rhinophyma. Oh, but uh, but uh, anyway, so we've got our ivermectin, ivermectin here. There you go. There's the two I took. Safe drug. Yep. Absolutely safe drug. And uh, apparently if I take it, it's going to work prophylactically that Yay. I don't get COVID or that I don't get hospitalized. I'm actually... That's support. Uh, that's support. That's... Uh, uh, a better way of putting it, uh, that's making it okay uh, in promotion of ivermectin. That's how I see that quite. Right. And that is what really bothers these other doctors. Again, this column was written because there are many doctors in the state of North Dakota who are furious at Dr. Becker for things like that.
for promoting a drug that is not proven to be effective against COVID-19. And the fear is that many people will follow his advice and take that when they should be doing other things, such as getting vaccinated, which are proven to be much more effective and may keep you alive. Everything I've read about ivermectin is it is potentially dangerous to be taking it. And this is, again, what the doctors are emphasizing. And they do not feel it is appropriate. They feel it is against the rules of the state of North Dakota Board of Medicine for Dr. Becker to be doing exactly what we just saw him do. So if he makes the argument that, look, I didn't tell you that this was a solution to COVID. I just showed you uh, right there. Uh, I just showed you on my TV show that there's nothing harmful to it. What's your answer to them? My answer is... Uh, what he's saying goes against proven science. What he's saying goes against the experts. And Dr. Becker, one of the reasons why it's important for the other doctors to call him out is because he has this platform. He has the platform of his television show. He has the platform of a newspaper columnist. He has the platform of being a state legislator. He has the opportunity to influence many people to make the wrong decisions about their health and those decisions could cause them to get COVID and could potentially kill them. That's why it's a big deal. You know, before the, uh, the break, um, I, I said that it hasn't always been kumbaya uh, between uh, Rick Becker and myself. Obviously, we have different political views, uh, certainly when it comes to COVID and vaccine, uh, we have different views. But uh, just, just take a listen to, to this clip, if you would. People like Joel have no idea what science is, but what they do know is that they can ridicule people by telling them that they don't know the science when simply their sum total of the science they understand is a regurgitation of the narrative of what some government agency says. I want to go to the science. Let's pull up our first chart, um, study. I, there, there are a ton of studies out about ivermectin, and I will tell you, I don't know how well or even if ivermectin works for COVID, but some studies say it does. Some studies say it doesn't. That's exactly, uh, you know, what I'm getting at is this whole, you know, back and forth when, in fact, I'm sitting here going uh, by the very agencies Jim Shaw just talked about. Now, I'm not a physician. I've made that perfectly clear. But I can tell you this, if I was a physician and other physicians uh, that were very reputable said that I needed to be disciplined, I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it one bit. In fact, it would say something about my career and who I am. I'm going to bring Jim Shaw back in. Jim, you heard the clip. What was your take on that? Uh, I had a couple of takes. First of all, there is no legitimate study from any credible agency that ivermectin is effective against COVID-19. And the idea of just throwing that out there as something that, that might help you is irresponsible and dangerous. And the second thing is, all right, he's, so he's criticizing you uh, for what you had to say. You and I both have the same position. I don't consider myself an expert. You don't consider yourself an expert. But I know who the experts are. In the case of what I just wrote, I interviewed about 10 experts, and they're doctors, just like Dr. Becker is a doctor. I trust them. I trust I've read from the FDA and the World Health Organization. So when the experts say that ivermectin is not effective and could be dangerous, I take them at their word. Otherwise, how would we know anything? You go to the people who have the training and the knowledge and you listen to them and you follow their advice. He said regurgitate. You know, he just said, you know, listen to people and just say it again. We have a platform here. I, I'm on TV. I'm on radio. I, I get a chance to write a, a blog every week. And, and I think more people read mine than might read his. I think I can show some data to prove that in many cases. My, my point is this. By admitting that I'm not a physician, I'm not a doctor, I hadn't gone through medical school, but use this platform to put on people that have. Exactly. Dr. Nag Paul came on with us earlier in the show. He's an infectious disease specialist. Perfect example. With Sanford. Isn't that what this is all about? Of course. I, I don't know if you asked him, but I highly doubt if you did, if Dr. Nag Paul would say yes. 
All you people in North Dakota, you should go take ivermectin. I highly doubt he would. He's a very I, credible person. People should listen to him, and they should listen to the doctors who I quoted. One is the president of the North Dakota chapter of American Pediatrics. Another, a former field officer for the state health department. Uh, these people have been out there. They've seen it. They've dealt with it. They know what they're talking about. Now, Dr. Becker is a plastic surgeon. And, and I have no doubt, you know, he must be successful. He owns a bar. He, you know, what number of bars? You know, if that's his thing, that's his thing. You know, he can do with his money what he wants to do with his money. I just know he's a plastic surgeon. Right. Uh, you know, and, and you have to be a doctor to be a plastic surgeon. He went into his specialty. Right. I get that. But the fact of the matter is he had to be that. He had to go through medical school. It isn't as though, you know, you have just this plastic surgeon spewing this stuff. You know, he had to pass an, uh, you know, the boards. I, Correct. You know, so when you say that, that people of high rank uh, that are physicians in this state say he needs to be disciplined, that doesn't surprise me because whether he's a plastic surgeon or not, they're on some level in the beginning before they go into specialties. That's true. And, you know, this is very gutsy of these doctors to come out and say it. I've been in the news media in this state for 40 years, this is the first time I've ever had doctors speak out against another doctor. That's how important it was for them. And again, the issue isn't just ivermectin, it's everything. It's about how he downplays masks, how he downplays the vaccine. If, if people follow his advice, they could be seriously ill. This is a very important issue, and this is why the North Dakota Board of Medicine has these rules to prevent, to stop bogus information from going to patients who wouldn't know any better. What, what really ticks me off is when he makes it out to be political. Because if I was going to make it out to be political, we'd be saying Donald Trump about 20 times by now. Because his base, you know, the Becker base, that, that far, far right wing that even his own party has rejected, okay, that wing idolizes Donald Trump. And when Donald Trump came out in the beginning of all this, he downplayed it. He, he said, you know, this is going to be over by the end of April. He, he did all of that. He wasn't a physician. He had physicians telling him that wasn't true. And yet he still did it. What, what's the difference between a Dr. Becker and a Donald Trump? There isn't. But the, the problem is here, you have a medical doctor saying it. So right away... In the eyes of many, Dr. Becker has more credibility than, say, a Donald Trump. Because what you know, uh, when I grew up, and you probably too, whenever uh, a doctor gave me advice, I took it as gospel. Well, of course I'm going to do it. This is what my doctor is saying. So it is very appalling, again, not just for me, but from all these other doctors I talk to, for a person trained in medicine to promote this misinformation. They call it malpractice. They say it needs to stop because if, if they don't take any discipline, that just encourages more misinformation. And that will only increase the spread of COVID-19 in a state that's already been hard hit. But what about physicians like this if they would have been around at the time of polio? If they would have been around at the time of measles and mumps and rubella and the very things that I had to show a card for uh, when, I, when I got into grade school? Uh, you know, the very things that my mother, who wasn't a physician, knew that Dr. Kippen was the man she trusted for my health and said, look, you need to get your boy vaccinated. He needs to get this. These are serious. What happened if what would have happened if that was if Becker was my physician at a time like that? Well, it would have been bad, but it's compounded by the fact that Dr. Becker has this big platform. It's not just that he's a doctor. Again, it's because he's a legislator, because he has a television show, because he has a newspaper column. And therefore, you can convince a whole lot of people and can, can communicate with a whole lot of people. But getting back to your point, the reason why everybody took the polio vaccine, which, of course, eradicated polio, is because we didn't have these kind of platforms and we didn't have these crazy cable networks that are anti-science. Everybody knew this is what they should do. They trusted the science. They trusted the experts. They got vaccinated against polio and measles and mumps and rubella. And they've all worked out great. I, it, it's astonishing to me why people would politicize a vaccination 
of a disease that can kill you. What type of pushback have you had on this column? What, what's been the response, both pro and, and con, on this column? 90% pro. Um, thank you for calling him out. Uh, there should be an investigation. We can't have physicians with that kind of a platform be able to spread this information. On the other hand, I had uh, a few people send me articles or send me their comments about how ivermectin can help and should not be discredited and good for Dr. Becker for telling us about ivermectin. So nine to one, it's been uh, very positive as far as what I wrote. And more importantly, not what I wrote, but what these other doctors in North Dakota had to say. Where can people find your work? Uh, they can go to inforum.com. All right. Jim, thanks. Thanks for giving us the time.